integrated math three practice test for T and ready on this version of the test. It's question number 25. The table shows the daily account balance of a checking account. And you may be shocked that it dropped this much, but if you have to pay bills, you're just lucky that there's anything left at the end. Um, what is the val What value is the closest to the average rate of change? That's key here in the account balance from day one to day four. Now, there's a couple things that are doing here that some of them make mathematical sense. Some of them are sort of like a horrible thing for them to do, and they're just trying to catch you. Um, the thing that's math related is average rate of change. Essentially, they just want to know uh, if we were to graph these points, what's the slope? So they want to know um, from one to four. So we don't actually need to know what the values are for two and three. The other thing that makes me think they may slightly be terrible people is that they include day five, but this only wants to know through day four. So I'm sure one of these questions here actually indicates day five, and that's a problem. So how do you find average rate of change? The same way that you used to find slope. You start at this point and go to this point. Remember when you used to do, oh, let's y sub two minus y sub one over x of two minus x of one. So essentially the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. The days don't matter if you have, like days will come whether you have money or not. And my life has been a situation where I know that's to be true. So like Wednesday will get here whether you have money for Wednesday or not. So that is the independent variable and that goes on the bottom. So on the bottom of my uh, little ratio here, I'll do four minus one. For the other one, you want to start where it ends up and not where it goes. That way, since this is a decrease, it'll be a negative number because 280 minus 355 should be negative. So I want to do this. And now I'm kind of ready to go. write these in as fractions if you have a T84. If you do hit alpha and hit y equals, this little menu will come up and you can actually start putting it in as fraction, whatever you want. 280.68 minus 355.75. Just make sure your numbers are set up correctly. Also, I can erase this so I can actually see the numbers uh, because I typed them in incorrectly the first time and it really annoyed me that I didn't get an answer I was hoping for. But the good news is I knew the answers were too far off to be anything other than error on my part. So you end up with negative 25.02. So you're looking at answer B as the correct answer. Now, other ways you could type this in. I wouldn't type it all in this way. Like if you just type it in 280.68 minus 355.75 divided by 4 minus 1. Because order of operations will make you divide this 355 by 4 first. And then it will start doing the subtractions. So if you're going to do it all in one swoop... Just use parentheses. Or, of course, you can just do it in steps where you do 280.68 minus 355.75 and hit enter and then divide by um, 3 and then you're good to go. Either way, any way that you want to do it as long as it's appropriately math. Let's just see, just out of curiosity, would the value for... 1 through 5 be one of the answer choices, because I have a sneaking suspicion that it absolutely is. Just as a reminder, the answer to this one is B. Yep, there it is. So make sure that you actually answer the question they're asking as opposed to the question that you think they're asking. It's really annoying. This is near the end of the test. You're probably tired from taking it. So they're going to sneak one of these little things in there just to sort of mess with you. Don't let them win. Just read. Make sure that you mark the appropriate spots and then go in and answer the question to get the answer that you're supposed to get.